Township Hall, uh, or the Cedar Creek Township <laughs> meeting to order. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, Cindy, would you lead us in the pledge this evening? Okay. Okay. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dave, if you would please call the roll. Trustee Wright. Here. Treasurer Jarvis. Here. Supervisor Eriks. Here. Trustee Dean. Here. Cook Steamy. Here. Everyone All is present. present. Thank you. Um, the agenda is sort of. <laughs> sort of the way it, it started out to be. Uh, <laughs> um, we have a few more people joining us, so I'm going to wait just one moment. Um, if you, the pickleball court, basketball, four, four square, and hopscotch quote, we have a new quote for that, um, but we're kind of going to lump that in with something else with another part of our discussion and um, we're kind of going to um, bring our discussion with um, the playground and the um, park project park, thank you park project we're kind of going to have a um, more robust park project discussion um, so that probably is all going to be lumped together so we're going to put that all together in um, a larger discussion so with that pickleball that'll be lumped in that so um, what you see before you isn't exactly the way it is so kind of bear with us when you look at that although you do have a new pickleball quote in your packet. Um, does anyone else have anything they need to add on your agenda? If not, then I would call for an approval of this agenda as it stands. I'll make a motion. Sure. All right, any additions, I mean, any um, further discussion on this? All right, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion All right, um, next on the agenda is the minutes for July 11th, 2023 from our regular board meeting. You hit, if you'll notice our, our um, printer over there, which is pretty ridiculous, prints on the front it says RF, on the inside says DAT, so apparently it can't quite read draft, so, um, but these are the draft minutes, so you've had, the board has had a, a little bit of time to review these. Um, anyone have any I'll edits make a to these? To support the minutes. Second. All right. Any edits or corrections or anything else? All right. Roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. <laughs> All right. We're making fast work of this. All right. Um, next on the agenda, treasurer's report. Our July 1st, 2023 beginning general fund balance was $1,338,438.03. Revenues totaled $53,232.83. Expenditures totaled $131,324.21. 
leaving an ending balance of $1,260,346.65. Um, we also have a budget amendment. This is to recognize um, the ARPA revenue that we're using to pay for the pavilion in the park. So I'm asking for a budget amendment of $28,150 from unearned revenues to federal grants. And that will increase our uh, Parks and Rec capital outlay expenditure amount um, our budgeted amount by $28,150 also. Yeah, I need a this. motion mm -hmm. and a support. Yep, to do motion. That. No support. Does anyone have any question for Heather on this? All right. Um, could we have a roll call on this, please, Dave? Bob? Yes. Heather? Yes. Linda? Yes. Dave? Yes. Brian? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions for Heather regarding anything that she had for you on your in her packet? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Then we will place the treasurer's report on file. Thank you very much, Heather, for the work you did on that. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, Dave, any discussions? <coughs> uh, we had a couple large bills this month. Uh, we had Oak Road maintenance, $24,000, got that taken care of. What was it? Uh, the Oak Road maintenance of $24,032. Oh, yes. uh, brining is $15,000. And we made a payment on uh, Pole Barn and Pavilion of $40,150, which is half of the total amount. So. Okay. Other than that, just the normal bills. I'll make a motion that we pay all the normal bills for the month of August. Support. Any questions for Dave on that? All right. All right, motion carries. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, we had to vote on it, sorry. <laughs> I, I jumped that gun. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, um, correspondence. Anyone have any, Dave? I do not have any correspondence this month either. So, thank you. And we have with us our auditor, Eric Van Dopp. So, <laughs> um, Eric is with us and he has, uh, I, we all swore that you were here for three days. So, that, I know, but every last one of us swore that every month or every year you were here for three days. That's how much we love you. You know, so. it's that my ghost hangs around an extra day. It's an old building, you know. <laughs> it's the ghost of Eric, right? That's right. <laughs> you see me live in the flesh, too. So, <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm just here to present a brief overview of the financial statements. I'm here for your benefit, so don't be shy about jumping in and asking any questions if you have any. Most of what I'll talk about I'll put up on the screen, but I think you guys also have the hard copies as well. Obviously, I'm giving you a summarized version, so if you want to, you know, dig into more detail, you're more than welcome to go dig in. So, <laughs> all right, as always, I always start in the front pages. Um, one, two, and three are the um, the uh, independent auditor's report. The second paragraph in the top section there is the opinion, where we say, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the various financial statements for the year, then ended in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. That's a really long sentence, but it means what it says, presents fairly in all material respects in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. That's what we call an unmodified opinion, sometimes called a clean opinion. That's the highest opinion we can give, and that's the opinion the township has traditionally received. Uh, following that, uh, which I'm not going to go through, but there's a nice management discussion and analysis section right behind the independent auditor's report that gives a nice overview of what happened from the township's perspectives as far as the current year and what your future plans are and things like that. It's kind of like that the cliff notes of the financial statements. So, but let's look at some numbers. Um, this is the general fund. It's a little summarized. Um, if you want to see it all broken out by department, it's on page 30, but for the sake of fitting it on one slide, I've got it um, summarized a little bit here. But you can see in 2023, March 31, 2023, ended the year with $876,523 in revenues, the first subtotal there in the left column. I have 2022 up there for comparative purposes, so you can see that's up about $104,000 from last year. 
Uh, things to note, you can see in the top line, property taxes are up about $22,000 with taxable value increasing. Um, and then uh, intergovernmental revenues federal, that's um, $55,179, and that's ARPA money that was spent and recognized as revenue during the year. Uh, state uh, intergovernmental revenues are up about $17,000 due to revenue sharing continuing to increase. And um, uh, interest earnings are up about $7,000 with uh, interest rates being up as well. So pretty much from top to bottom, you can see you either a couple categories stayed flat, but most of them went up some. So it was a really good year for revenue. On the expenditure side, on the bottom there, total expenditures of $816,755. That's up about $55,000 from last year. Um, intergovernmental revenues general, or, uh, sorry, I'm getting my tongue tied up here. General government expenditures encompass everything that's not included in another category. Um, those are up a little bit. Um, in the past year, you had um, the new deputy supervisor position. Um, elections go up and down every year, and this was an up year because it was a national state election back in November, along with the related primaries. So that accounts for a bit of the increase there. Uh, public works includes um, highways and streets, well, mostly streets for you guys, but uh, that's down. That just fluctuates depending on the amount of projects that you do in any given year, and there were fewer done this year. Um, and then the main reason for the increase is capital outlay at the bottom. That's $129,565. Um, that's a Chevy Silverado and the park and playground improvements that were, were done uh, with some of that with ARPA funds. So overall that leaves you with an increase of revenues over expenditures of $59,768. Um, no transfers in or out or other, other financing activity this year, so that's your final change in fund balance. Ending fund balance of $1,209,196. So um, all in all a good year. You guys had nice increase in revenues, were able to get some capital items done and still save a few dollars for future projects. So, any questions on the general fund? All right, and your other fund is quite small. This is the little road improvement fund. This is uh, just funded with um, a couple of special assessment projects. So, you've done some road projects that are funded with special assessments. The money's collected in here. There were no new projects this past year, so all that's really happening is the uh, collection of the assessments. So you see a little bit of revenue coming in for that. No expenditures, and then fund balance is, is growing a little bit there. Um, and that, well, there's a little bit of seed money here that you guys transferred in uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, that will continue to grow a little bit and be able to fund future uh, assessments so you can fund them internally and not have to borrow for them. I know, exciting stuff. Any questions here? <laughs> okay, that is it for my slides because you only have two funds to talk about. Otherwise, um, the, there was a new accounting standard implemented this year on leases that, um, that uh, had some impact on the layout of the financial statements, but uh, it didn't it didn't really impact your bottom line at all. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, you've got a couple of letters also if you've got those handy. Um, we've got one letter that says uh, we've audited the financial statements of the governmental activities. It's I think like three four page letter. This is the auditor's letter to those charged with governance. We are just required to put certain things in writing every year, and that's what this letter is. Um, even though I'm here and I'm talking to you, it still has got to be in writing. Just key things that professional standards say are important to disclose. Um, under qualitative aspects of accounting practices, the second paragraph, again, it mentions that new lease standard was adopted this year. Um, and that, that I think will have a greater impact on you going forward with the cell tower leases um, when that's um, fine. I know you guys are working at redoing that with your um, cell tower company. Um, also, it goes through accounting estimates, the fact that we looked at them and believe they're reasonable. Um, any difficulties encountered in performing the audit would be noted. There were not any um, corrected and uncorrected misstatements. We don't have any uncorrected misstatements. Management's corrected everything. Um, significant adjustments can be found in the attachment. The second page gets into whether there are any disagreements with management on accounting or auditing principles. Heather's really mean. She always tells me I don't know what I'm talking about with the GASB, but uh, no, she was good this year. No, we didn't have any, any concerns or issues or anything like that or disagreements. Management uh, provided or signed a representation letter to us, uh, certain that they fully disclosed everything and a few other required disclosures in here. Frankly, other than the brief mention of that new accounting standard, this is a pretty uh, vanilla letter. There's really not a lot in here that's unusual or unique. 
like I said, it's just a required communication. Um, the other letter you've got is a recommendation letter. As a reminder, we are here to audit your financial statements, which we just talked about. We're not here to audit your internal controls or express an opinion on them. However, in the course of doing an audit, we do obtain an understanding of your um, procedures and whether in the planning stage you're actually looking over the audit. And if we come across items that we think are recommendations, we issue a recommendation letter. However, these are just things we came across. Um, we weren't specifically, um, excuse me a second, Excuse me. Bless you. Excuse me. It's all that ghost dust. Okay. Um, anyway, these are just things we came across. We're not saying this is all there is. There could be other items as well. It's just important that you have good policies and procedures in place throughout the year to keep an eye on things. Um, you guys have had more recommendations in the past and have acted upon them, improving other things as we brought them up. But just two recommendations this year. One's just continuing to work on year and closing to reduce the number of audit adjustments. The better adjusted your books are. Um, then you know, you've got more timely information than when, when we come out and adjust them. And the other one is one that's very typical for small entities and that's the control surrounding the preparation of financial statements. I spend way too much of my life explaining this one because we give this recommendation a lot because we have to, we're required by professional standards, but we draft your financial statements as part of the audit. However, there are still your financial statements, your numbers, disclosures, footnotes, et cetera. The only thing in here that's ours is that opinion letter. And standards say you should have the uh, skills, knowledge, and experience in drafting financial statements in order to take responsibility for them because we're not supposed to be part of your controls. But most smaller entities don't have a spare CPA finance director type person sitting around that has that level of knowledge. So we have to give that silly recommendation. I would definitely emphasize you've been through the financial statements with your, your uh, full-time elected officials and have gone through them. I think everybody's got a good understanding of what's in there in the numbers. But um, not having that last little step and, and footnotes and all that other stuff. We just have to give that recommendation. It's not a big deal. Probably close to three quarters of our entities get that recommendation. State sees it all the time. It's not a big deal to them either. Everything seems fine. That's why we gave you an, un uh, an unmodified opinion. And um, that's about all I've got to say. You guys have been really quiet. Any questions for me? I think I have a statement. Oh, okay. <laughs> the statement would be that as a board, or I think the more the people here in the office, it would be more in the way of um, Heather and myself. Whenever we have a question, we bring it forward to Eric during the course of the year. So that would be our statement. Rather than wait until the audit time, um, we, we don't wait. We just ask it of you, so um, we feel very comfortable. And Eric never um, has any problem, or at least you've never indicated that you have no, any problem. No, I tell in people any I'd rather have a five-minute phone call and help you do it right back in June than yeah. spend five hours cleaning up a big mess at the end of the yeah. year. I'm sure you guys would prefer that as well. So yeah. we absolutely encourage those. Uh, phone calls or emails and uh, yeah, I know you guys like you said here and there during the year You'll give me a quick shout or what do I think about this and I let you know and yeah. that works well And we appreciate that. Sure. Idea. So it makes a big difference to us along the way All right. <coughs> Anyone well, else here on you. the board? Thanks to thank to all of you that I put through two days, three, whatever, <laughs> uh, audit. And thanks to all of you for having us out to do the audit. Uh, we appreciate it. Enjoy coming up to Cedar Creek. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So the only place I get <laughs> applause. <laughs> well, this is a great audit. And we really appreciate it. So. <laughs> Yep, you can apply them. Thanks. We're going to give you a few minutes while you wrap up here, yeah, Eric, we whether, before we just carry on. So you can chat amongst yourself for a few moments. Okay, next on the agenda, um, we have um, public comments, agenda items only. Um, if you have any comments from the public on the agenda. Where's the donuts? <laughs> <laughs> I should have. I should have. I have to come up with something. They were on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> ate them. <laughs> you might have one. <laughs> Anyone from the public? Anyone? One? Two? 
Dave. <laughs> um, okay, the next item then is old business. This is the renewal of our Muskegon Charter fire contract. The rates for the fire contract um, were earlier in the year. I, um, along about January, I began having conversations with all three of our fire departments and it was time we recognized that our fire contracts were expiring. So I, I um, had conversations with the, the respective supervisors and um, talked with them about it's time to begin talking with your fire chiefs and see what they believed would be appropriate amounts to um, for to discuss with them about their fire contracts they in turn did that and um, the fire chiefs talked with each other and because they do reciprocal agreements with each other kind of covering our townships and then they came up with amounts um, Dalton's contract has been settled and signed. Muskegon and Holton, Muskegon Charter and Holton have not. So um, we have in front of us Muskegon Charter. The board has had an opportunity to review that contract. Um, Muskegon Charter meets tomorrow evening and um, they have this contract in front of them as well. So with that said, um, I would entertain a motion to approve the Muskegon Charter Townships fire contract. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion about Muskegon Charter Townships fire contract? This is for three years for the members in the audience. It goes, and we try and keep all of our fire contracts um, in sync so they expire from July 1st, 2023, and they go through June 30, 2026. Any, any, um, any discussion regarding this? All right, could I have a vote? We're spending a considerable amount of money here, so. Bob? Yes. Heather? Yes. Linda? Yes. Brian? Yes. Dave? Yes. Okay, then um, this contract carries. And then this one will have to have um, my signature, Dave's, and Heather's. And um, if we could stay after this meeting and sign this. Or I guess we can sign this tomorrow, we're all here. And it does not need to be, it would be good if we You know, standard. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, we have, there was a little bit of a to do earlier today, and I think we might be able to settle this tonight. So um, if we, if um, I got a call about Holt from Holton earlier today, and um, it, it was a one of those 11th hour calls that you don't want to happen but it did and it was about Holton's contract and I think I figured it out so I think maybe we can get this all taken care of and be done with it um, I believe I know what happened when the fire chiefs were working through this I think that the fire chiefs took their contracts because the co the contract didn't get copied from here it got copied from there mm. and, and so I believe that's what happened and so I think that the Holton contract got was copied from the Muskegon Charter contract Muskegon Charter is a charter contract charter township Holton and Cedar Creek are general law contracts. So there was some discrepancy in the very first paragraph. 
So um, the first paragraph is the hiccup in the, in the, the Holton contract. So it should read, this agreement effective on the first day of July 2023 by and between Holton Township, a Michigan general law township in the county of Muskegon and the state of Michigan and Cedar Creek Township, a general law township in the county of Muskegon, state of Michigan. That is the difference. The one, there is one word that is different. It is the difference between of and in. A general law township, the old contract read of the county of Muskegon, the new one they would like to read in the county of Muskegon. They have us listed wrong in there too. They have us as a corporate. Well, that's the, the, that's the old, that's the new yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, both them and us are listed as a yeah. municipal corporation. So yeah, that's, right. so that's in the new one. Right. Yeah, so that's just wrong. Right. Okay. So the, the, the new one is, should read General Law Township. So we can do one of two things. We can, we can agree to this as tonight or we can sit down and spend more time because later tonight we're probably going to vote to um, to look at our park project and have a separate meeting. So we can push this aside to, to agree to either meet with our attorney or talk with our attorney about this and then spend time and vote on it the same night we vote with our our park program park project or we can vote on this this evening well given that's just it's literally typos you know there's no substance it's, to it me. literally is we're it's we're, we're we're hung up on one word what is and your, do we want to it's the one word is it's a preposition do we want to do we want to get hung up over a preposition? I literally do not want to have drama over a preposition. I'll make a motion. We we go ahead and approve it. What is the supervisor's guidance on this? If you've dealt with it. Yes. I have one other thing that I noticed. I, I agree. I think when they were working on it, they because if I'm look I looked at them. <clears throat> did we make side a motion? Did we make a motion to we discuss it? I made I'll a, motion. a motion. Oh, you okay? You did. Did you to discuss? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, did, did you compare it to last year's? With the yeah, we did. No, yeah, I, I did. I'm, I'm looking at Muskegon Charter next to Holton, and I think yeah, they were working on it together. Yeah. And this first paragraph, they just changed Muskegon to Holton, forgetting that yeah, yeah. one's it's Charter. One. one thing is missing though in the Holton one. Um, there's not in section two. There's not a D where they um, agree to submit an annual report. Then I hmm. think we asked, So I just yeah. wondered if that was, you know, just uh, they missed it? You know what, um, Bob has routinely submitted annual report, or has routinely submitted monthly reports. Right, so I didn't know no. if that's something yeah. they didn't want to have to do or if no. they just, it just got missed. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that up. I'm, I might, um, it also, um, yeah. where we sign in the back, both townships are listed as municipal corporations, just like they are. Um, we might, we, we might have to, uh, I think then based on this, we need to amend this, we need to amend this, re this contract ourselves. It needs amending. I didn't have time to go over it based on this, so. Um, because I was still working on other things at this point. So we need to, based on this, amend this. Well, can we approve it as amended, assuming that they're okay with it? Um, we can, with those additions, we can approve it. Okay. Assuming they didn't intentionally... They are going, they could be voting on it this evening, and that will not, won't ratify based on that. Again, um, I thought they turned it on. No, they ha they're voting tonight at 7.30. Yeah or 7 o'clock. What is your recommendation to the board? 
um, You started this in January, got a call an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bob is not expecting that we're going to approve this tonight. He's, al he's already received a call that we're okay. this afternoon. So I would, I would say that we're going to hold off on this based on amending this contract because there, we now find issues with it. So I, I believe that the contract can be, we're not going to do anything differently other than amend those few flaws. We can, we can approve the, this contract tonight, in my, in my estimation, okay. with these um, corrections. Okay. I would say yes, okay. approve the contract tonight. Okay, so with the correction of the wording that we are both general law townships, with the addition of section D, um, that they'll submit a annual, yearly annual report, and with the correction at the end that we're yes. Um, general law. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Good. I just I, I I see no need to carry it forward, okay. and and prolong this. Yeah. Yep. It's they're pretty minor. Yeah. But he's not expecting, they won't be, I don't believe they'll be able to vote on it this evening based on. But this way we can get it done and get yep. it over to them and they can. Yep, they can make their, their edits, their appropriate edits. Okay, and we still have fair coverage. Yep. Correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's the most important thing. And I will let Bob know that we've made these changes and hopefully they will be, um, they'll be good with us. Okay, we need to vote that we are all fine with this or not fine. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Heather. Yes. Linda. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Dave. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate that everyone was willing to carry that forward. Um, Next on the agenda, um, it's the West Shore Township Survey, and this is really for information only. And uh, Heather Delamata to our team, and Jeff has dropped off. He's just too busy to participate. So um, We've had a professional assessment done on this building to see where we stand. Uh, we got the report. I have a full report if anybody wants to see it. I included the... Uh, the summary here basically saying yeah there are some issues with it but nothing fatal we are you know, pretty sound overall and um, it can be fixed the problems so the next phase uh, is to bring in their team and what they do is they they look at what we have now and meet with everybody here and interview them and they have a, a big database of uh, space requirements for municipalities and stuff and different functions and we'll work with them on you know who needs what and who needs to be close to what? And I know you want to be close to the bathroom, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the older. The bane of my existence at <laughs> <that> darn bathroom. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we work, we work with us and, and work up some scenarios and some proposals. And then we come down to, okay, we like this and here's what the cost is gonna be. Do we wanna go forward with it? So we're asking for $8,000 to go through this process with them, have them come in and meet with us. You get to that point of saying, this is what we want to do, whether it's fixing this building with an addition or a totally new building. I talked to her about it and we'd like to approach it both ways because sometimes it can cost you more to bring an old building up to code than it does to take and build a new one. So we're going to look at it from both ways, look at maybe this building and an addition to get us to where we need to go or a totally new building. And they can do that fairly easy with square foot and price per square foot and stuff. So, and then we can make a decision on which direction we want to go, if if at all. You know, we might decide to do nothing. But I think we owe it to ourselves and the community to get to that point. I've been some decent office space. So, so I'd like to make a motion to approve up to eight thousand dollars to get them in and uh, work with us and go forward in the next phase. Support. 
Any second. more discussion? Any questions? Was there a second? Yeah, I supported it. I made the motion to support it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw 59.30. Pardon? Um, I saw 5,900. Right. Yeah, that's, if you read it close, and it says, you know, things are covered, we're going to cover up the two scenarios, yep. anything ex extra is extra. So, just in the event that we say, well, what okay. about this, try this. So you're okay. looking for contingency. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to come back to the board for every time you want to look at a different scenario. Okay. So, yeah, the, the quote is for like 5900 and hopefully that's all we have to spend on it. Okay. Anything else? Anybody have any questions of Dave? Any other issues that you're concerned about? Anyone else? Anything else? Heather, I see, I, I can see it on your face. <laughs> you got a question back there. I'm, I'm pretty good at reading you now, so. <laughs> well, and, uh, the advice that I heard over 10 years of trying to decide whether to remodel or build new always ended up being it's going to be cheaper in the long run to build new. I just don't want to spend money doing research if we don't have to. I get it that it's a good idea. We want to. We want to dot all our eyes and cross all our teeth. I just, I don't want to. I don't want to spend unnecessary money if we really feel certain that starting fresh is going to be the best route. Well, that's what we're going to look at. I know. I, think I know. Got, it just I think seems like a lot. To and we had a professional there. engineer look at the building and say, "Yeah, I think there's money to be saved by going with this building." Mm -hmm. But without getting into the details, it's hard to tell. Right. Depending on what you want to add in terms of communications and stuff to the new building, it might be better for you. Yeah, building. that was another thing I, I don't remember if I talked to you guys about. Um, our IT guy weighed in, and he said that building is not, um, right. I mean, it, you it, know, it, when it comes to, our, and I know Brian right. understands this, we yep. have a crawl space area under there. And he said, you know, for maybe a young, spry man, it's doable, but it's tough. Right. And he said, it, a new building, you know, as you're looking to the future and you're looking at lots of IT, that building is very outdated. And there's not much that you but can you're do. You're stuck. You keep saying that building, this, this building. One. I'm this talking building. about when I was talking oh. with Lynn. Oh, okay. Um, he said, he, in his opinion, this building, as far as our yeah. technology Who's needs... Opinion? Lynn, RIT guy. To recable it with Cat 6 cabling. Yeah, and to jacks bring it up, you know, for whatever you need in technology. Yeah, as we are moving forward, well, that's more and more. These people important. are going through that, so they're I'm, aware I'm of sure. what the requirements I know. are. So okay. I think it's worth it to spend this money to get the okay. opinion one way or the other. Davis, the one, the one question, the one, it's not a question. Again, I'm making statements, but I think the the one thing that as I read through this, the, the different papers you gave me, it was more in the way they're going to ask us questions about what we want, what we feel we, we need. We need as far as workspace and so, who no, needs to be close to who. And so no matter what we do, whether it's this building or any other building that would, or other people down the road, us, anybody else, whatever it shakes out it's good for a retrofit or a re or a new build or whatever right. Right. so whatever it takes to make it the most functional make yeah, the township right. you can functional. put a trailer out here with offices in it you know right yeah it solve some of our problems <laughs> right. Right. so 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 right. whatever kind of building we build whether it is a retrofit or a new building we would be looking at what works best in right. a building, right. any building. Right. Yes, in our discussions with that, what exactly are our requirements? There are some requirements by law, handicap accessible, if we start modifying mm -hmm. your technology, I mean, to try to pull cables and such in here, it's gonna cost you a lot more because it wasn't mm -hmm. designed back then to do that. Mm -hmm. And this company is gonna come in and, and talk to you about what are our needs, what are our future needs. And the people that built this years ago, I wasn't even born, right? So we've outgrown <laughs> it, grown up. So what is it that we are, what do we need? Mm -hmm. And they're gonna sit down and talk with us, talk to us about state laws, actual requirements of um, office spaces, any type of ingress and egress for fire, or emergency, all these things we start talking in the committee, and we're like, this is really ballooning up. So 
we felt it was best to get a professional group in. And the first serve they did, they did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Everything we asked of them, they did exactly what we asked. Um, and I understand it's a lot of money because at first we talked, is there a way for us to jointly combine to do this? And as the more we discussed, the more it grew. Mm -hmm. And we went, we think we need a professional. Okay. So that's that's where we're at on that. A, a couple things come to mind, too. Um, when I worked at Harbor Hospice, we looked, we sat that sat down we looked long and hard hard about retrofitting um different buildings many different buildings throughout muskegon county for the pop and hospice residents and in the long run and i'm i'm not i'm just again once again making statements um because there were so many vacant buildings in muskegon county at the time and f into the you know, could we look at those and find a building that might work for the hospice residents? And it turned out it was, in fact, cheaper to build a new building than retrofit a building. And, and I, I'm not making a statement that we should do that mm -hmm. because there is cost in what, where do we place people, you know, in order to do that. We weren't placing anybody at the time, we were just building a, a new building. Um, also, I'm also looking at the Maple River here. Um, when we, when people shut down the Maple River to do the logging, what was that, a hundred years ago? They had no idea of the, the cause and effect that would have. And now, all these years later, we're looking at opening that river back up um, and now there's engineering studies that we're doing um, and Cedar Creek is part of that so it's kind of amazing all the things that you have to take into consideration yes. so it, it's about due diligence I think we're doing it the right way um, it is costly Just statements. <laughs> All right, go ahead to vote. No questions? Bob? Yes. Heather? Yes. Linda? Yes. Brian? Yes. Dave? Yes. All right, we'll proceed. Now, the next <clears throat> step would be a joint meeting. Have them come in, talk to us about the process, and I think the board needs to be involved in it. Public's welcome too. So, we need to schedule that. And we'll publicize it so anybody can come and listen. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Public's Thank you. absolutely welcome in this process because they're very much a part of this. Okay. Sorry, Dave, for hey. almost. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't let you forget. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, the next part of this, and this is also Dave's right now because he's. Yeah, and Bob have been um, intimately involved in this project. The, um, the pole barn, Cedar Creek has a piece of property right across the street here, and it's a commercial piece of property. It's a non-conforming, help me Lorraine, non-conforming commercial. Legal non-conforming. Legal non-conforming, okay. And which means it's not the right size for exactly what we need. Stand up here, Lorraine, and do it. You were gonna, you were gonna be up, so ma <laughs> so oh, mad Lorraine. at me for making you do this. <laughs> it's the lot size is not. It's not conforming with today's ordinance. Okay. The width isn't big enough. The size isn't big enough by a lot. And so, and so, we're doing everything in our. It, 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 but it is also the only piece of property that is appropriate for the needs of this building. And so we asked West Shore Engineering Survey and Surveying Company to come in and survey this piece of property to see if, we could, if it would meet the needs of this building. Um, Tim DeMumbrum came in and he had his team look at it. It does meet the needs 
with certain setbacks, we, um, we have to minimize, minimize certain setbacks. And Lorraine has set up um, the ZBA. Uh, she set up, she sent letters to the neighbors asking if they are okay with the, the building being located there and the setback restrictions. So ZBA is set up for August 16th, I believe it is, yeah. at five o'clock. And the one thing that, that is clear to us, and it was very, very clear to me, that if we're going to ask our citizens to jump through these hoops, we're, the township is going to do the very same thing. So um, um, we did, we, we had the survey done. Um, it was complicated, the whole process was complicated. We were like literally sweating bullets, can we make this work? Um, Bob literally had, um, had gone through, um, went through a number of companies and um, to see in terms of, um, you know, the bids, the bid Quotes. process. And a lot of the changes that we made yeah. through the process. Yeah. So all that was done and everything, and um, Dave's been involved in this whole process in getting this done. And now we're we're hoping um, if it goes if the ZBA passes this that in the middle of August we're ready to go with this. We have the board passed the the hope the. Um, Budget. budget and we picked a, a winning bid on this and if everything goes according to plan they'll be getting they'll pour cement for it or whatever it is they do because the I'm not a builder first. yeah and I don't want to be a builder <laughs> so um, but I at least have to, I, I now begin I now know some of the process on this um, thank goodness for Lorraine. So thank you. anyway, we just wanted to apprise you of what what is going on because the township has to jump through the very same hoops that we make our citizens do. And it's not always fun. We didn't have fun in this process, I can assure you, um, because we were literally worried that we couldn't make this work. And hopefully it, uh, the ZBA will, will pass this for us. Maybe not. So, time will tell. Any questions for the board? This was information only. Okay. I actually have a question. I'm so, I, I'm so sure. sorry. Is this appropriate? No, but you, I'm going <laughs> to answer it. <laughs> so, if we're looking at a new building here, uh -huh. and we're considering a new building here, and we're spending apparently $5,900 up to $8,000 for these guys to come in and do this consultation as to whether we're going to keep this building, what do we need the building for across the street? The building will be here, one way or the other. Yeah. A new building, an old building, there's no other place to go with the building. I understand that. So what's I think he wants to know what, what that building is going to be used for. It's a pole building. It's a pole building. For storage for plow trucks and lawnmowers. And Wouldn't that be part of a new building over here? No. Not no. necessarily. Okay. There's no room for it. Okay. Thank you. And we didn't want to <laughs> put it out in the middle of our park. No, it's okay. It's okay. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. yeah. It's it's okay because once you get too once you get too much, and it's a great actually, it's a wonderful question because once you get too much past this property right here, you enter yes. into park property. Perfect. Thank you. That's all I to know. Thank you very much. And, just and there wasn't room for a pole barn in the park. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so that was a really good question. Thank you. <laughs> now I feel ease. So the next, uh, the next question, or the next question, the next topic is the West Shore survey. And um, Oh, here it is. Um, you have a, a letter in front of you, which is um, two parts. The township is divided into 
Martha, I might need you on this one. So they called it a, they called it a ghost property, but the ghost property that they're referring to, we, we called it an orphan lot here, is right here. Ghost seems to be the term of the evening here. Um, but this was the little half acre, was it? Right here in the parking lot. So we are literally combining the township property here with this half acre right here. And then the, those two parcels are being combined. And this was, Martha, Martha discovered this as we were looking at park, or, um, putting together the potential spark grant. And then we discovered that we had so many different deeds that were not, nothing was combined here and it was somewhat problematic. So, and this piece was missing altogether. So Martha went down and to the register of deeds and then she had somebody, she couldn't find it and then she literally had somebody else um, dig around and it was from 1903. And um, so, um, the, so we now need to get this piece all combined with this piece of property. So that is going to be done and it has to be done. So those two pieces are together and then we need to get our park properties combined. So the piece that we purchased with the, Lom the Lomax property and the, the older park properties need to be combined for a community park. So those two are separate, a community park. So those are done for insurance purposes, and this is done for insurance purposes. So they're two separate entities. So I need a, and this, the estimate is for $2,840. And there's also filing issues that you want your purpose, you want your deeds separated also. So the total is $2,840. And the one thing that we also needed, there's staking going to be done. We need it for clearing the land. Um, they're going to put really clear delineation of where the stakes are. So because we have people coming in to clear the land and um, um, when they go to, to clear the Lomax property over there. Miss Digg, do they got to have Miss Digg come in there? We're going to have to have Miss Digg for a lot of things. And then Ashley Irrigation, we're going to want to make sure that's all marked out as yep. well. Yep, and they're going, to, they're going to do the trees here too. So there's all sorts of reasons we have to have all this done. So, so could I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? We're spending money. I need a roll call. Ryan? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Heather? Yes. Bob? Ah. Yes. Motion carried. carried. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, okay, here's the one. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Heather has a chart. I think that's where we start. Heather has a chart. So this one right here. Yeah. The one that you want. Is that your packet? Yep. Oh. It's a, no, it's in the top on the top of your um this is just your this is all about ARPA. We have the amount of ARPA revenue that we received, which is $348,999.64. Um, and then we have listed our projects that we have done so far using our ARPA money. Are you still looking for it? No, we found it. Okay. Um, and there in bold, that is the amount of ARPA money that we have left that has not been spent which is $234,887.76. Is there a time limit on that? Mm -hmm. There is, which is why we want to, this is why Linda <coughs> and I ag agonize over this, because 
We want to make sure that we use the funds, but we want to make sure that we use them the best possible way that we can. Um, and we want to use them on projects that are going to benefit the most amount of people. Um, the park is one of the things that um, ARPA money is kind of encouraged, like um, green spaces. This is um, from COVID, this money from the federal government. <coughs> so, this is what the people in the indicated they wanted on the community survey. That's right, too. Yeah. yeah. Park improvements. So Is that available? Let me see. I have seen that survey. We'll get you a I copy of that survey. Right. Yeah. Thanks. So we've used it. Um, we've got the new chairs for the hall that are easy to clean. Uh, we contributed to a broadband study. We used it uh, to help pay for the playground equipment so the kids have a safe outdoor place to play. We got our fitness equipment for the seniors. Um, we <coughs> used ARPA and senior millage funds on that. Um, and then our latest project, which is the pavilion. Um, the second section there are additional projects that we have been discussing that we would like to do. And so we've started to do more research. Um, a pickleball court was one that we thought would be really great, and Linda has. <laughs> yeah, that is the, the pickleball court has now um, is. We estimated when we were <laughs> doing our brainstorm session in May, we we were looking and and we thought we would spend about thirty thousand dollars to uh, convert the current basketball court into a pickleball, basketball, um, four, square. four square hopscotch. Yeah. And it's um, now approaching the Taj Mahal. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> apparently that's not as simple as we thought it was going to be when you get the experts out here to look at it. Yeah. Um, it's a, a lot more costly, like uh, about $100,000. Yeah. Okay. No. To, yeah, pour, we... to pour a new court because what do we it do is... That? Because you can't, it can't be converted. Yeah, it can't. It, it costs convert. more to convert that one than put a new one. On. Yeah, yeah. It's so we can pour a new court for for thirty three thousand nine hundred dollars, and then you have in front of you the 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 quote for the new court. Fifty nine thousand seven. So we're we're literally talking. 60, 90, 93, 98,000 something. So. Have we got competitive bids? Uh, we've gone to two places so far. So the, the court is, that's the, the court is the court. That's how much it is. Now the basketball <laughs> court to do it went from 30,000 to 59,000. Correct. No, the Brian. Brian said if we we did it, cut the cement out and all this and that, and brought had, it up to where it was level, he had that at fifty nine thousand. I've, I've as gone well. to two people for for quotes for the court, so that's uh, right now where it's just a done deal. I mean, that's. I think that I think I washed his hands and walked away. Oh, I, the I haven't seen the quotes other than this. Is there a second the, one? the the quote for the basketball court was a phone in quote this afternoon. So we're not a asking for any. Yeah. We're not asking for any motions or we're just like updating everybody and this is where we're at and and we're thinking we want to do more research and um, yeah, I agree. discussion yeah. and prioritizing how we want to spend that last. Two hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. Do you want to do you want to update them on what the walking trail? Yeah. Would be? So, so the walking trail um, was another one of the of our high priorities. Um, so I reached out to Matt at um, I can't remember where they Brian and Newhoff. Brian and Newhoff. Um, and he came back with some updated amounts for the walking trail. So. If you, I should have printed off our plan, but anyway, it's to update the trail that we have now and add a significant trail on the remaining property. Um, in order, he said, if we wanted the the cheaper way to go would be four inch chips and fines, which is like a fine gravel, and um, or we can pave it. 
if you go with the cheaper gravel, it's 73,600, that's an estimate. The paved is 102,400. So I kind of think if you're gonna spend 73,000, spend an extra 30 and pave it so it's, it's yeah. done it's and it's nice and working. it's low. Yeah. 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 Lots more yeah. people bad won't have the maintenance costs yeah. right. on the diesel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everybody. <laughs> We're talking about riding bicycles, scooters. Pushing strollers. Yes, yeah. 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 baby strollers. And right. have you seen the number of babies we have in this township right now? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we had COVID. <laughs> 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 Lots of doors were closed. And they had something to do. Bob. <laughs> anyway. Well, they anyway. adopted them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Well, we got a new section of baby boomers like, during the war. I think so. <laughs> so, my personal opinion is I, I would like to see the walking trail and the parking lot as our two big Priorities. priorities to use with the ARPA money. Sure. Um, Bob, Ron did get one. Bob, who forgot my husband's name. <laughs> uh oh. Ron. Ron, that's it. <laughs> he got one quote today, and then they gave him, and I've forgotten the amount, but they gave him another name of somebody they thought would be cheaper. Uh, that's an odd way of doing business, but they literally said there's somebody else. For, for what? For excavating those trees. Oh, okay. So okay. they told him to call, and, and I called three places, which is our bid process. Mm -hmm. And so only one of the people called us back. Okay. And they, call, they called Ron, who's in charge of that. And, um, and they literally told him to call somebody else, too. So, which I thought was a good, I mean, a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. So. So anyway, this is just an update for you. Um, Linda and I had also um, talked to Jeremy from um, Sinclair Recreation, who we worked with on the playground, about adding another playground piece. Uh, they do have a grant right now going on, so that's another possibility. And as much as we think another playground piece, we were looking for something that's going to kind of appeal more to the little bit older kids. Um, they have some neat, they're called challenge courses uh, that look like they would be great. Um, but I still think that the walking trail is something that's going to benefit everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that needs to be... How about a total world? A tilt a whirl? <laughs> okay. I did check into like some spinny stuff. Yeah, some spinny okay. stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't know I, what they're called. I am, we, we're, we, Keep in mind, we have this $234,887. It yeah. has to be spent by, by, when? by December, the end of December 24th. Oh, or it goes back to the federal government. Well, the project and, has to be started, well, started by the end of 24th. Yeah. Right. And the money has to be spent but, but by the by, end of 26th. Yeah, but that's correct. That's going to come very fast. It comes yep, very so. fast. Yep. And w I. I'm not sending it back to the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my goal to send the money back to right. the feds. Right. So, um, you know, there were too, there's too many things that we need here in Cedar Creek. We just don't, this is the, the, the hub of mm -hmm. Cedar Creek here. Mm -hmm. And we had, th this board and the people had spoken about what they wanted, the things that they wanted in this township. And... Um, you know, and you know, we wanted for the basketball, for, for the baseball field. They needed parking spaces for the the um, playground area. They need a way to get to it, and so there we've got to get those things done. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, people are having to walk a long way to get to the to the park or to the playground area. So we've got to rectify that fast. So, so with that said, we need to set, I'd like to get that, that special meeting set up. So if I could contact each of you board members, I'll, I'll put together its, um, uh, a number of dates and we'll set a time where we could get together and meet for a special board meeting. Um, we've talked about in front of our, our audience, our members of our citizens, 
um, the projects that we're looking at so you know what we're planning on, on or what we're considering. Um, I really like the, the teenage, um, you know, mm -hmm. obstacle or challenge course. Because mm -hmm. I hate seeing teenagers walking on the side <coughs> of the road, hanging out. I hate that. That just drives me crazy because they don't have anything else to do or they're hanging out watching video games because they don't know what else to do with themselves during the summer. That makes me nuts. We need to provide them with better opportunities and, um, you know, build it and they will come, I think, you know. So, anyway. So I will get in touch with you. We'll come up with a date and time that we can meet and decide, sit down, spend. It's, it's a matter of challenge, um, deciding how to better spend these dollars on the projects that make the most sense. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're all in agreement, um, that ends our, our business here as for the township. Um, um, board members, um, Bob, do you have anything that you wanted no, to say? No, it's great to see everybody coming out and yeah. summer's, man, on its way out. It's coming fast. Yeah. You're yeah. heading to Florida fast. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to get Bob fixed here. Yeah, I'll, I'll go see the surgeon tomorrow and hopefully... He does it Thursday. Oh, I don't. Th I literally well, don't think it well, works that fast. Well, I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think their schedule I, I works just, quite that fast. It's been since May, so it's been a long time. But I've only did pain meds for two weeks. So. Oh, good, good job. Well, no, because I might have done damage to my leg, you know, oh. from. Oh yeah. Not doing it. So. Okay, Heather. Uh, I don't have anything. Um. Uh, remember, the Arts and Crafts Fair is Saturday. It starts at 10 and goes until 3 or whenever we decide that, you know, after 3, if they're still going strong. And the sheriff's going to be out there at 11 with his polar, what's it called, Andy? Polar? Treat. Treat. Polar treats. Okay. And the fire truck from Holton is going to be here as well at 11. And we have a food truck, which is just classics. Just classics. So, and we have Good food. we have a number of vendors out there. It's small by design, but it's intimate and should be fun. There's some great vendors out there. So, sample everything and buy lots. <laughs> <laughs> and so, bring your wallet. Yeah, bring your yeah. wallet. <laughs> bring your wallet. They'll love it. They'll love you if you do. <laughs> Dave, do you have anything? Well, I just want to say that I, you know, I think what's going on out here is, is great. I think it's a real attraction. You know, in the last couple of months, I've seen a lot of property come up for sale for a lot of money and sell them pretty fast. So I think people want to get out into the rural community, mm -hmm. and this is a, another attraction. So. Yeah, yeah. Brian. Thank you for everybody coming out. It's great to see people. Um, and again, thanks to the boards and all the people in the township for all the work they do. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Now I'm getting more involved. It seems to even be more and more and more as you feel the layers back. The group works together fantastic. I hope we keep that up. We are a strong team. And we got a great community we live in. You know, I went in the military and came back to Cedar Creek. And it's great to see that addition out there um, and everything that's going on. It's exciting times. It's it's great to be on the board during exciting times. So, thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you, members of the public. Anyone have anything that they would like to say to us? Yes, sir. I have just Terry. <laughs> <laughs> you have <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is You should Happy. feel special. <laughs> I uh, I live on Wilson or Fisk and Wilson Beach. Yes. Yeah. Address 6437. Okay. My wife and I have recently done some major renovations to our house and now we're doing the landscaping, trying to avoid the water problems that we've had for the last well, almost 30 years. Okay. Because of drainage. Okay. And my wife 
then I went through and did ditches and stuff like that, and we were hoping that we could get the township and the road commission to work together to widen the road, maybe like three or four feet. We've actually moved the shoulder of the road back on our property. Fisk Road? What's that? Which road? Fisk Road? Fisk, yeah. Okay. Yep, I live on the west side of it. Okay. And uh, we moved the shoulder of the road back about three to four feet, maybe a little more. And my wife talked to the, top, the road commission. They said they were going to bring gravel out, and all they did was come out and grade it. We were hoping that maybe they could work, you guys could work with the commission and widen the road, reshape the ditches, or shape the ditches properly that we put in. Because we're trying to avoid any more water coming onto our property, and it's pretty much the lowest spot on the road for the water to drain. I always said every window I look out of my house, I look uphill. I'm in the bottom of a bowl. <laughs> okay. We got lakefront property. Have, are you, What's that? You, we got lakefront property, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Okay. Now that's pretty much what I have there, and my neighbor also, he's uh, dressed Don, is working with us on that too, uh, but we wonder if we could get you guys and the road commission involved in it. As well, during the winter times, there's excessive parking along both sides of that road on Fisk. There's times where I can hardly even get back in coming home from work. Okay. <coughs> if if we can't get the road wide at all, can we get some no parking signs put in it? It's, it's, a, it's a public road. I don't, don't know, know sure. how it's li listed as public or private. Fisk is, I think it's oh, well. Does the road commission plow it? Yes, they do, but I've been well, told they're hired by the county. Well, they can't. They can't do private roads. Road commission okay. can't take our tax dollars and use it on that right. so it's got to be it's got to be right. a public road yeah, okay yeah, and yeah. we found that out in our yeah. own township as well yeah, it, yeah. It, it, if they plow it I'm, I'm pretty sure this is public but okay. um, but my question to you sir is have they when when you did you meet with the road commission or did you how I'm did sorry, you I'm, how, I'm how did you how did you communicate with the road commission how did we so, can communicate. How did how did Barb talk to the road commission? She talked to him actually right outside our house at the road. Uh, okay. One of the people were coming down in the tr okay, in a, in a okay, trailer answers, truck. Okay, that answers my question. Um, there's a better way. Okay. So. <laughs> right. You get a golf clap. <laughs> Let me, let's have a conversation. Um, Andy, do you live by them? I was gonna follow his comments. Okay, all right. Let us, ha let us have a conversation. Uh, and as, um, as a group, let's have a conversation how better, how to better handle this. Okay. Okay? All right. And uh, just, just as perspective, there's only Seven of us on the road? Uh, something like that, yeah. It's a dead end. Doesn't mean that. It, it's just, we just like our spot. That being said and done, because there's a boat ramp right there, we get a lot of traffic. There's more traffic for the ice fishermen than there is for the normal fishermen. But even last week, somebody just parked their truck and their trailer in the middle of the road. Yeah. And just, and we get it. They don't know where to park. Yeah. It's okay for them. They don't know where to go. And it's not necessarily a boat launch. It's a public access. But you can carry your poison ivy out. and poison yeah. yeah. You're not, you're not putting a pontoon boat in there. No. You're, you're no. carrying a kayak down there. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's great. We love it. We want everybody to enjoy it because they deserve to, and it's a public lake. And there's... Here, you want the podium? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you're are taller, certain You're taller things. and slimmer than me. If I stand up, I'm gonna look like a fat slob. Okay, go ahead. So, you public, yeah. so the, the point of the matter is, is that 
there's just some things that show up that aren't uh, optimal to public safety. And we've dealt with it to the best of our ability. Uh, and after years, we're kind of getting up to maybe our noses with frustration. Uh, so uh, the road originally was supposed to be 15 feet to the west of where it ended yes. up. Yes, the road is actually off center from where it originally was. And it's, over the years, I've been there almost 30 years, and it's gotten narrower and narrower towards the east because so, of other people plowing and how things were done on the road by other people that lived there at the time and stuff like that. And all of that over the years, over those 30 years, have left Terry and his wife Barb in a bowl that actually literally ruined the foundation of their house. Yeah, we had to rebuild and that. And they've the just house spent, it, so. I'm not going to say the amount, but they've just spent an extraordinary amount of money to make sure that their house is fine for their retirement. They're never going to move. This is their home. Yeah. And just over time, everything has shifted and kind of left the two of them in this predicament of this isn't right. I mean, they just spent a lot of money to make sure that their house was okay, and it's just all going to happen all over again. Which I just found out today. Mm -hmm. We're having our final inspection tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all that being said and done, we're not here to complain. No. We love no. We love our township. We love all of you. Uh, we want to be here. And there's some concerns that we believe are legitimate. Maybe they're not. I mean, maybe somebody looks at it and goes, shut up, you whining pieces of... <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. We'll live with it. Uh, that being said and done, it would be nice if we could. I just heard you say there's a better way. There, yeah. So there's now a, I. There's a better way to communicate yep. with the road commission than the person in the truck. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to shut up because I backed up my boy. <laughs> I'm his wingman. My neighbor back here is going to stand up and say a bunch of stuff, and he's got a louder voice than I do. So I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> Thank you for listening. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But that's exactly what you were supposed to do when you come to your township meeting. Thank you very much yeah. for doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love you guys. I love being here. I love living here. I must know. I've been here 30 years now, so almost so. <laughs> now we'll let the guy with the golden voice. He loves everybody. You know? Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> I, I live at 6420 Fisk, right across from Terry. Um, <clears throat> Our road sucks. Um, <laughs> okay, it, it's a public it road. Okay. It's a public road. It's Fisk, and it's great. it was um, as as we rebuilt on that lot and moved in there. We've seen we've seen it go downhill over the last two years. In fact, when it rains now, half the road ends up in our yard. <laughs> the other half is um, Well, we repaved Wilson Beach. Yep. Yeah. It may be time for it. Us it to really take has that. nothing to do with Wilson Beach at all. Um, Fisk Road itself kind of comes down off Wilson Beach and goes yeah. down a little bit. So the area that Terry is talking about does need to be widened back out to the stop sign again. And that drainage in that whole area has never been looked at. There's no mm -hmm. kind of drainage of any way, shape, or form anywhere on Fisk Road. So you're looking at our house to the east of Terry's, um, our neighbors next to it, which gets some flooding too. And you can literally see a river of gravel coming down from Fisk Road into our property, right down to the lake. So we need to work on some different drainage up there, as well as um, getting that road rewidened. I have spoken to the county, <coughs> three phone calls and through the website to submit the you work. You have? Oh okay, yeah. Okay, that's what I was saying. There's a better yeah, way. Yeah. That is the and better way. And that's why I wanted to come <laughs> up and back these guys up. Because I, I, call, I sent it into the website, I followed up a few weeks later. They actually told me, one of the representatives, that could make help make the decision lives right down the road on Wilson Beach. Yes, he does. Yeah, he was he supposed does. to stop by and see us and talk to me, and he never heard <laughs> that. Bob go. Okay. Oh no, I know that guy. So <laughs> that works. Okay. Strong okay. That, that, that is that is in fact the better way. <laughs> right. So you have not gotten anywhere. I have not gotten anywhere with it. 
Okay. Uh, All right. Website, three phone calls. Um, back and forth and never heard a follow-up at all. But okay, this all right, does so that is what out. I needed to hear. Yep. So, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> and we're on it. Time. Yeah, we're on it. Thank all right. You. Thank you so very much. My question is, has any of you guys went to the road commission's meeting with the commissioners and everybody? They no, have a meeting once a month and you can get on the agenda and I'll tell you what, your voice will be heard there. Thank you, thank you. No, and Linda's been to the meetings. I haven't been recently. I haven't but I been mean, she's go. been yeah. there. But I have, what they, what they, I can tell you this, they respond very, they, they like nice people. Well, they're our neighbors, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and it's one of the reasons that we showed up here today. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it's just over time, no one's paid attention to it. We've all got these events in our lives. Yeah. And over time, no one's paid attention, and it's creeped, and yeah. it's time to set everything to where it's supposed to be uh, rather than the creep of, I mean, the house Andy bought was the very first cottage on Crocker Lake from, oh, when did they build it? 30s. Back in the 1930s. Yeah. So it's just a tiny little road. We've got we've got our people. They're they're almost like family, and it just creeped. And I, it, all we're asking is, can we just set it right? And how do we do that? I, I think Paul Paul Lorraine, don't you think Paul needs to do an engineering study on that? Probably. Yep. Yeah, that's who I'm going to next. There's Lorraine. I'm going to talk to. You're really important. Yes, she is. <laughs> yeah, the engineering department. Yeah, the first I'm going to ask Paul Bauman to do an engineering study on on that if he would, and then bring and ask him to bring it to the board so so we can prepare for a discussion on what that means for road work and on our end. Mm -hmm. So. And also, I'm not opposed to having a special assessment on my taxes for some of the improvements. If it may be because your road is so small and it's a dead end. Because your road is so small yeah. and it's a dead end, okay. there is no public benefit, and there's where you need to know, there is okay. no public benefit to, and that's how we assess people. And the difference between assessing and not assessing people in Cedar Creek Township. There, your road does not have a public benefit to the people of Cedar Creek Township because it's a dead end. It yeah. only serves the people on Fisk Road. Okay. Other it, than it, maybe no, the, it's open to the public, other than it? the, it, you have a public access. A yeah. 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 Here's, here's so there I'm may be a difference, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I'm gonna have to study yeah. that. Is, I'm yeah. gonna have to study that. Yeah, when we've got six or eight cars showing up in January parking wherever they want to park yeah. uh, and, and God bless them. We want them to be out on the lake. I, I am going to I am going to yeah. study that and I'm also going to study the public access yes. and and what does that mean in terms of signage on your road for yes. that public access. Yes. Because there may be something we can do for signage on that. Thank you. And all right. please, if each of you understand, all we're doing is raising our hands we do. Yeah. and going, a little help. <laughs> That's all we're doing. Okay. We just need a little help. Yeah. And and I appreciate the the politeness with which you did it. <laughs> no. That goes a long way. We're not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, any other public comments this evening? All right, could I call for adjournment? Uh, move to adjourn. Four.